Would you be able to start with your name and job title, please? Bacon? Yeah. Yeah, no. K. Srinivas Rao, Senior Editor, Times of India. Thank you very much for coming on. Uh, here's, here's something I only found out recently, that the IPL tender document itself is actually quite an expensive document to get in the first place. I'm not saying that you bought it, uh, but clearly you had access to it one way or another. But it shows the different level that the IPL bidding rights, and I suppose the ICC bidding rights are on to most of the other cricket boards in the world, that in order to actually see what you could tender on, you need a lot of money just to start with, don't you? Yes, a lot of people who buy the tender don't necessarily buy it to bid for it. Uh, you know, a lot of people buy it to try and understand which way is the business of cricket heading over the next five years. And IPL, of course, because of the financials that it attracts, uh, you know, it tends to actually show you uh, which way things, you know, from a sponsorship industry, from a television industry perspective, which way things are going to go forward. So, yeah, people do invest that kind of money in trying to understand where the business is heading. And, it, uh, oh, sorry, I was just going to say, it's, it's a document with, and, and and I'm assuming the ICC one will be very similar as well. It's a document with just so much information in it, isn't it? Like it's it's not something that is, you know, for you and I, I've written more about politics. You've written more about the business, especially the IPL. Um, it's not always that, that, that easy to get direct information, whereas the, these documents actually have just incredible uh, caseloads of information, don't they? Yes, of course. Because see, uh, I'll tell you about little things here. Uh, for example, uh, you know, this year, the IPL that you're watching has 74 matches, right? So the next year, again, uh, it's going to be 74. Not because of anything else, because uh, 2024, India goes to a general election. So the window is relatively going to be smaller and, you know, kind of it's going to be more packed. But what is the window going to be like in 25, when in 26, you know, once the next new uh, FTP comes into play, you know, so are the matches going to increase? If matches are going to increase, like what is going to be the quantum? What is going to be the window available? and everything surrounding it. So it's a lot of exercise that goes into understanding how the calendar is going to play out. So remember, this is a lot of what is being discussed or sold or what is being viewed from the outside. It revolves around the calendar. And that is why it makes what makes this process so complicated. You know, everything is about the window that the IPL gets. The whole battle is about that. Yeah, no, exactly. Um you know, you've you've obviously written a lot of good stuff, and also you're you're now the expert of the Twitter thread. You're trying to take over from Abhishek Mukherjee's title as uh, chief uh, chief cricket Twitter threader uh, online. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, one of the things that you mentioned in one of the threads is that cricket has the second largest addressable audience. So we can make an argument that cricket is not the second biggest sport in, in some ways because, you know, there are different audiences are worth different money and all these sorts of things. But as far as actual human beings who, who like cricket, after football, um, it's got the second biggest audience, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I was referring to it from an audience perspective. Mm. I, would, I was referring to it purely from a viewership perspective. Uh, it is uh, now the second most viewed, uh, you know, when you look at you, because you can't, of course, you can't uh, include the Olympics. So I'm talking about sports, you know, played. Yeah, real sports. Between yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. So from that perspective, yes. Yeah. So when I was referring to the addressable part, I was uh, actually talking about the viewership and the, uh, the eyeballs that the sport generates. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, uh, what was... Uh, you know, this was largely a, a business context where they said that if you are manufacturing a cap of a pen anywhere in the world, you know, and if you're not selling that cap in China or in India, you're technically not in business because, you know, here is where the consumption is. So, uh, you know, today as we move from linear broadcast to digital, uh, the same logic applies where uh, you could be manufacturing content anywhere in the world, but if you're not selling it in India then you're not really generating the kind of eyeballs, potentially the kind of eyeballs that you can. So it's as simple. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, you know, the other thing is, I think everyone on this podcast will probably be fairly well um, aware of the fact that cricket is one of the best selling things in India. But I don't think people Only understand. Good selling. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, w I think one of the things that people maybe don't quite understand as much is that the IPL is now probably one of the biggest brands, if not the biggest brand that India has kind of made. So there's a lot of very big Indian brands like Flipkart, for instance, and, you know, some, some other co companies like that out there, but they are not 
well known around the world. Whereas the IPL is now a brand that is well known around the world. Like you talk to American TV executives, they know what the IPL is. They may not know much about cricket and everything else, but they know what that is. It's a very, very big brand around the world now, isn't it? Yes, uh, you know, you said it's one of the big brands. I would rather make a slight change to it. And I'll say probably it's it's India's greatest ever export post-independence. Uh, you know, until the turn of the century, it was the movies. The movies were India's greatest export to the world. And post-turn of the century, the IPL has taken over. And actually, uh, Jared, if you were to ask me to divide this, uh, you know, India got its independence in 1947. 1952 is when the constitution was recognized and formed. And from there on, if you see, I, you can divide it into those many, only those many instances where, you know, something was, uh, you know, kind of born out of the shackles, you know, like the 1983 World Cup, you know, in many ways, it's it's larger than just a couple days lifting the World Cup. It's like, you know, making an entire country come together and believe that you could actually go ahead and win something, you know, and be world champions or something, and which was never really understood from that perspective. And then again, 1992, the, the Manmohan Singh, uh, you know, decision to break the economy. I mean, sorry, not break the, to liberate the economy mm. and to, so those instances, when you look at it, IPL is right up there and no product has come out of India, which has been bigger than the IPL. To draw it from an American perspective uh, is, is probably because you, when you look at India uh, as a country, which is uh, financially, when we look at India and, you know, in terms of a business community that uh, exists in India, if you look at it, it's got, it's always perennially had a very trading mindset. India as a country has never been a manufacturing country, yep. right? You, when you, when you look at, you know, technology going forward, India has a lot of tech guys who are migrating out to the West, but they're not really staying back here to manufacture. So IPL was a product that was manufactured out of cricket, you know, mm. if you look at it that way. So it's it's really a very unique product to have come out of the country, and I would say it's the greatest export. Yeah, I mean it's it's really I, I mean it's a really interesting thing because it is it's a culmination of a lot of different American and football sports uh, you know management um, marketing and promotions, but very Indian as well. Like I mean, if you you know sometimes I look at some of the other T Twenty leagues around the world, and I think they don't have they don't have a strong national identity i think the cpl is probably the one the next one where you're just like you know the cpl calling itself the biggest party and each island having its own vibe whereas the ipl and and, and this was obviously thought of at the time it's such a distinctly indian product from beginning to end that even if it wasn't as big as it was it's it's almost groundbreaking uh, because we knew that the market was already there in india but it's that culmination of making it an indian an Indian style tournament as well, which I think is really, really important. And that happened almost from day one, didn't it? Yes, I, I have a term to refer to the IPL. I call it India's coziest club, uh, where, where it, you know, you can't cut a check and enter. Uh, you know, you have to be someone to be actually be able to, you know, entering the space as where you're coming from. So you look at what brings the whole industry together. Uh, you know, in India, it's looked down upon that politicians run the spot. Mm. Uh, but again, you know, I have said this again and again that, you know, it's a country where red tapism exists in a very heavy manner. So without politics, you know, the Vankhede Stadium wouldn't have been ready in time for the 2011 World Cup final if politics did not, politicians did not run spot in India. So again, coming back to your point, what I'm trying to say is that um, this, this Irish broth that makes for the IPL, where somebody brings in something to add to the broth and you know, is what actually makes this so beautiful. And you actually go to the last mile. What actually makes it tick is that in 2008, when the IPL started, what made news? Uh, Shane Warne being the first cricketer to be sold for $450,000, right? Uh, so overseas players made all the difference in IPL. Uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, the four players who were part of the playing eleven. That added to the IPL's charm. By the way, there was no difference between the domestic T20 league that happens in India and the IPL, right? So this was a overseas players coming in and a bit of music playing. But now if you notice the trend over the last couple of years, look at how the franchises have been going. They have not uh, shied away from not going in with their full quota of four overseas mm -hmm. players in the playing 11. And you're going to see this trend more and more. What is it telling us? It is telling us that, you know, it is, it is moving away from that stage of where people want to be, 
look at superstars rather it's moving to a stage where india wants to identify its own superstar coming from a very you know who knew i mean who knows these guys rinku singh yet they are ayush badoni where these guys coming from it's like a real time indian idol at play mm, yeah. uh, you know it's if you look at it that way and um, as i said uh, we are not even looking at a product uh, in any of the final stages like my job probably as a journalist and what i do is i'm just covering the transition of a sport which is moving from one level to another and i don't know where the destination is i'm just tracking the transition that's it so yeah. we really don't know what is the final shape going to be like no no exactly i mean you know i get questions about this all the time I, and and i said well, i don't we, we don't know at the moment if 16 or 18 teams is a is a maximum or if they'll eventually get to 30 teams like you know an, an american style league we, we we don't know the final shape uh you know we still have the auction but we know that the auction is very good for tv but not really a perfect uh thing for a sporting uh uh you know league all these sorts of things everything could change in this and the way that the shape you, we could have to your point it would not surprise me one day if a indian uh, owner came in and was like i want an all indian team right it may not work yes, of course. but it could definitely happen of course of course and by the way uh, starting with the auction you, you mentioned the auctions and that's why i'm saying i believe the auction has gone past its sell by date yeah, you know so. uh, the mega auctions that we saw recently was a very futile exercise because uh, where is the club, club club culture seeping in if you're going to every 4 years 3 years come to the franchise and say okay dismantle the team that you worked on for all these numbers of years and now because we've got two new teams in so we've got to give them a fresh uh, you know so this is something that uh, that obviously indian cricket is going to have to work uh, you know going forward you also talked about the number of franchises i don't see that happening in the very near future mm. uh, at least in the next 6 to 8 to 10 years i don't see the number of franchises increasing again because um, you know what bcci needs to do and i'm not very sure if they're going to do this but what they need to do is that it's one thing to expect top dollar from the industry and it's one thing to say that listen i have the fanciest product um, you know cricket india breeds cricket and i have the ipl so i will demand top dollar from the industry which is fine but again, again the question that indian cricket needs to ask of itself where i say indian cricket is a bcci is that are you capable in the present circumstances of servicing that top dollar right of of returning so you know you just can't go on expecting the money what are you giving to that ecosystem in return are you giving an administration which is as good as expecting you know 60000 crores or whatever 8, 8 billion dollars to come into it so a lot in bcci has to change mm. uh, i'll give you an example uh 2010 lalit left india uh 2014 15 so the raman quit the ipl i i the way i track ipl trust me i have not seen anything new i have not seen anything new any innovation that uh, you know the tournament has seen over the last 6 8 years when it's, it's 2017 when the ipl completed 10 years i wrote a headline said not a perfect 10 and uh, you know there were some people in the bcci who took objection to it and i said prove it to me that i'm wrong tell me what new have you done like you know, i can't see a single bit, bit of innovation mm. um, you know the commentary and i'm very I, i'm actually very straightforward about it. like you know i find the commentary very boring except for a couple of people who can actually draw a narrative i'll give you an example the other day there was a there was a local boy who was making his debut uh, his name is kuldeep sain plays for rajasthan royals mm. and uh, he was making his debut for rajasthan royals and I remember listening to the commentary at that time. So it, it, this boy is from a state called Madhya Pradesh in India. So the commentary went: Kuldeep Sain making his debut, who hails from Madhya Pradesh. Madhya Pradesh boy Kuldeep Sain making his debut. A debut being made by a boy from Madhya Pradesh whose name was Kuldeep Sain. They didn't have anything to add. So what I realized is there's no narrative here. Yeah. And unless that narrative is built, the things are not going to change. So I hope, I hope going forward, things are different. Yeah, I think you're right. I think I think a lot of this stuff that, you know, someone who watches a lot of uh American sports as well, like if a, if a player was going to make a debut like that, they would get him in the room with the commentators before and the commentators would chat to him. Um or the, you know, the press officers would give information and there, there would be a narrative there. I think you're right a lot of that. And also, they haven't changed a lot. I mean, the the 100 was a disaster on many different uh fronts for the ECB. but they were trying to push things forward um partly because they'd been left behind and in the big bash 
for all of its flaws, again, is trying to push things forward. Whereas the IPL has sort of been a little bit stuck. It's quite interesting. Let's talk about the TV rights because I find them absolutely fascinating. I love following your work on all this. Package A TV rights, that is the Indian market TV rights, correct? We expect, well, who do we expect to be uh, throwing their money around for those particular rights? Uh, it's between um, the Viacom 18 uh, JV, uh, the mm -hmm. newly formed Viacom 18 JV, Disney and Sony. Okay. Uh, you know, yeah. Package so A is only TV. It's between these three parties. Package B is uh, for digital mm -hmm. India. Uh, and there you have, uh, again, the Viacom 18 JV, Disney, Hotstar, uh, and Amazon. And then package C is a cluster of those non-exclusive matches. Again, the real fight is between these three parties and package D is free for all. So package, again... package D is the rest of the world rights. Is that right? Yeah. 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 Okay. So, so to go back to package A rights, TV 18, Viacom, Disney and Sony, right? Did... Disney and Sony have, have obviously kind of been involved one way or another before. Uh, TV 18... Is this where we're going to see the majority of the money now? Of is course. This, that's going to be the big one, isn't it? Of course. So uh, here is the thing. Uh, with Sony, I mean, in the, among the three names that you took for a, from a television perspective, who is here in a, in a, you know, a do or die situation kind of? It's Sony. Because uh, they have lost the digital plot already. Uh, Sony Live has not really gone. And, you know, this is... Uh, this has become a very vicious cycle now, you know, from an OTT perspective, if you go to see, you know, so you, you get subscribers when you get content, you get content when you have money and you have money when you get subscription. So it's like a cycle, right? Yep. So Sony has not been able to build on it. And TV is their last ditch effort to actually stay in the game. Uh, why is it? Because again, this is not about cricket. And I say this from across mediums, whether it's television, whether it's digital. Cricket until un, until a few years ago, what was it? I as a broadcaster would go buy the rights to the game and come to you and take, say, you know, here, whatever, one, a dollar, two dollars, a hundred rupees or whatever, and you watch cricket. That's what I charge you for. And uh, going forward, cricket is not the product that I'm selling. Cricket is just a catalyst, an engagement model, which I'm using to actually get to my consumer who I'm actually selling something else. Mm -hmm. Probably it could be the next for rollout of 5G data, Spectrum, which is coming out, it could be the next e-retail product that I'm coming out with. Essentially, me telling the consumer, listen, uh, you know, I don't want your 100 rupees, watch the cricket for free. Just to buy the TV from me. Mm. So it's something like that. And that's one side of the story. And the other side is how long TV persists. You get to engage with your consumer. Sony has only that bit uh, to, to, you know, kind of play for. And that is where they're going to take this cost up. So 49 rupees is the base price per game of television, package A. Right? Mm -hmm. So if if you would leave Sony out of the picture, then I don't see the bid going past 70, 75 rupees. All right? Mm -hmm. But the moment you bring Sony to the picture, there's all possibility that per match game could go beyond 100 rupees. Uh, not 100 rupees, I'm sorry. 49, 49 crore is... Uh, Okay, yeah, no, I, so, I, I assumed so you were talking 100 rupees because I, yeah, I yeah, could yeah, bid yeah. for that. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I was giving an example. So yeah, yeah. if you leave Sony out of this, then TV between Disney and Viacom, you see Amazon is not in play here, right, yeah. from a television perspective. So for TV uh, between Amazon and Viacom, whoever takes it will stop after a certain time because for both of them, OTT is the real game going forward, right? Yeah. TV, because right now, if they have to paint the canvas, they need the entire canvas. And only then they're going to make it look beautiful. And that is the requirement they have for TV. This is where Sony is going to take the bidding up because Sony needs only the TV part of the canvas. So, you know, and then, of course, the real battle will begin when the digital play comes up. So I want to talk about the digital one, because I think even though there's more money in package A, package B is, I think, more interesting and going forward going to be the more important one, uh, you know, for, for people like you and I and um, going forward, that'll be the one that we'll, we'll be focusing on as as the the world changes, right? So you've got, um, you've got Amazon there, right? So Amazon are trying to get a huge market share in India. Now, they there's obviously lots of different ways they could do that. I, we talked about before, I think I mentioned Flipkart before. Flipkart obviously got popular in India before Amazon did. Amazon is still fighting for that. 
Amazon has what tennis, uh, maybe Formula One. You know, rent. Uh, you know, a couple of cricket rights as well. Do they have the New Zealand package? Perhaps? New Zealand, yeah. yes. So they're starting to make a play for that. If I'm Amazon, I'm not thinking I need the cricket because I need the cricket. I'm thinking I need the cricket because that is an opportunity to crush Flipkart, right? Simple. Is that the way you think they're thinking about this? Of course, of course. As I said, cricket is merely a catalyst here. So it's Amazon. So look at what Amazon did in NFL, right? Mm. Uh, they paid uh, for the Thursday night football. Uh, just for Thursday night football, they went ahead and paid $10 billion. It's a 10-year deal. And now look how they package their weekly, uh, you know, kind of uh, matches around Thursday night football, where Thursday is seen as the end of the week. Friday is technically the beginning of the start of the weekend, right? Mm. And and they build it all around Thursday night. And they tell you where to go and eat for the weekend, where to go and shop for the weekend, what to buy for your weekend. And, you know, there's, there's a proper model around it. And as I said, uh, this is exactly what's going to be at play. Because uh, I'll give you another example. Look at Disney's total subscriptions, right? Mm. Mm. So... Global, Disney Plus. So what happened was when Fox was bought over by Disney, whatever the $54 billion total value was, right? Close to 20% of it was their India business. Now, what really was their India business if you remove Hotstar out of it? Mm. Because again, from a digital and OTT perspective, which was anyways going to be the way forward, it is Hotstar that brought those many numbers to, you know, kind of uh, to the table. I mean, uh, you know, the kind of numbers that was built around the IPR. Imagine how big this is for Disney if they don't get the IPL because Hotstar would have run its race. It's the end of the road for Hotstar if Disney doesn't go and, you know, so whether it's Bob Chapek sitting in, uh, you know, Burbank or or it's uh, Rebecca Campbell sitting in Burbank, you can take my word that no matter what statements they give out for the media, uh, it's imperative for them to come and uh, retain these rights from a digital point because of the subscribers. Mm -hmm. So this is not a game of cricket anymore. So you're right. Yeah, Uh, it's, it's not about cricket. Talk to me about Z. I think you wrote an article about Z recently. I haven't read it yet. I've got saved. So Z have always been, I don't know if at war with the BCCI is fair, but they've always been almost close to war, maybe maybe a cold war at times. Obviously, Z were behind the Indian Cricket League, the the the, the league that lasted was it a season, season and a half, whatever it was. Um, uh, didn't, didn't go particularly well. A lot of match fixing involved in it. A lot of players ruined their careers through it. Uh, Z was also involved in the failed Lalit Modi takeover of world cricket when they were going to literally buy up all the best players and do their own T20 one day and um, test match league. So, you know, Z and BCCI are not exactly friends, but I see Z is now a very big chance of going for the digital B, uh, package B rights, the digital rights. Yeah, so where Z is coming from is a very, you know, the, the not getting along with the BCCI and the tussles that they had. It goes back a very long time, around 17, 18 years, when Jagmohan Dalmia used to be the president of the BCCI. Mm. And Z and, uh, you know, Jagmohan Dalmia never, ever saw each other in the eye. Like, you know, they were always, they always uh, in a face-off. And a large part of that had to do with the fact that Mr. Dalmia thought that Z really wasn't a sports broadcaster. Mm -hmm. And ESPN Star at that time had already set its foot into India, the JV between uh, ESPN and Star uh, Fox. So that had already set forth and Mr. Dalmi always wanted to package it from a sports build up and give it that, that sports build up. And uh, he saw them essentially as, uh, you know, the face of a sports channel, what an ideal sports channel should be. And that had led to a lot of, uh, you know, t- battles between Z and uh, BCCI fought in court, which eventually began with cancellation rise, ended with the ICL, which again went on to become a, a story in itself. But then all of that has ended now. Mm. None of that really for any practical purpose actually, you know, exists anymore. Uh, the cases are either lying dormant in court or like, you know, they're pending forever, but have no real meaning to it. So Z wanted to approach the BCCI to say that, you know, listen, I mean, we would like to do something because again, tomorrow, if they were to try and make an attempt to bid for any of the rights, not just IP and even the BCCI bilateral rights that come up later, uh, you know, there could always be this controversy in saying that, listen, there is a legal case pending at the end of the day, right? So Z wanted to tell BCCI, listen, we're going to take this step and forward and we want to like kind of, you know, finish this once and for all and the BCCI wouldn't respond to them. So Z was wondering why is BCCI not responding to us until they realized that, listen, why will they respond? It's our duty to first go and take the cases off the court. Only then they will respond. And that's what they did. And then BCCI said, oh, yes, welcome. <laughs> So if Z, if Z offer the most money, 
do you think they'll get those rights or is there any residual problems between the two where they might go you've offered the most money but we've had problems with you before we we don't want to be involved they've got a loss fund of a billion and a half dollars i can tell you so they uh, are they are they capable of doing that bit of spending yes more than capable can they withstand the battle coming from disney amazon and viacom mm -hmm. i have my doubts on that no because again, yes, uh, Z wants to build its own OTT profile. They want to go public. In fact, cricket is important because uh, they've been waiting for the longest time to, you know, kind of uh, to make a re-entry into the OTT segment and and actually go IPO. And you know, and this merger with Sony and everything. A lot of this revolves around cricket. The whole marriage, yeah. uh, you know, cricket has to be born out of it. Otherwise, it's not going to go anywhere. So, so again, Z is a player. Yes, are they capable of this? Yes, do they, they do have the reserves for it. But I doubt with these three in the picture, the mm. Viacom, 18, JV and Disney and Amazon. You know, when we talk about Disney, we talk about a company market cap of $102 billion. Really, I mean, you know, it's like, I don't know how many people are going to like, uh, you know, face up to that kind of challenge. And then again, of course, Viacom and Amazon who have other priorities altogether. Yeah, I mean, this is really interesting. As someone who worked for Crick Info for you know a very long time, obviously that was I think it was owned by Disney the entire time I worked for them. That I don't think they ever quite got cricket until about 2017, 2018, and a lot of that came around the Disney Plus model where they start you know and because of what was going on with Hotstar and everything else. I think they started to realize that this was something that they needed to get serious about. Like even if you look to this day. And I say this as a former employee and still occasional freelancer. I don't think they've ever really taken Crick Info that seriously. I don't think they've really worked out. For, for instance, you're talking about a $102 billion company and they still don't have a cricket reporter for every country in what is the biggest global cricket website. And I mean global, I think Crick Buzz is much bigger in India, but globally, I think Crick Info is much bigger. So it's certainly been a very late play for them. So uh, Disney are really, really interesting. And then you've got Amazon who... It almost, as I said, I almost think it makes the most sense for Amazon. Like, uh, you know, and, and there was something else that you talked about. I can't remember. Was it, um, you talked about someone like Reliance and Reliance will do everything, um, <laughs> I, I think. But you could, a company like them or even a mobile phone company or something like that, the ability to come in, pay a lot of money for that right and make sure that every, um, anyone who wants to watch the IPL has to have their SIM card or has to have their phone or has to have their, their device or whatever it is. There's so many different options for these companies if they do have the kinds of billions of dollars uh, backing that they can get involved. Yeah, Jared, I actually imagine if I'm Viacom 18, I actually, and if I go ahead and win this at whatever the price is, I actually stand the power. I actually hold the power to take all cricket off television once and for all. I can do that. I will pay the money not to show cricket on television. I will pay the money to take cricket off television. You know, there are some, some instances where I, I put a few things, uh, I, you know, I say things that people, I don't know, people find it really difficult to digest. The other day, yesterday, I put out a tweet saying that, you know, uh, in five years, linear television, linear broadcast is dead. And people mm. wouldn't, uh, what are you saying? I'm like, you know, even West TV is relevant. I, I said, I said by this tweet, I don't mean you break your TV and throw it away. I'm just saying that you can live without a TV. That's what I'm trying to tell you. The linear broadcast is dead. Appointment viewing, um, live spot is the only medium that mm. is keeping appointment viewing alive in any context, if you look at it. And uh, that, again, is uh, depending on what kind of business engagement you want to do. So I mean, not really, really, buy television rights to show cricket on television. I may buy the television rights to actually take cricket off television. So there's a way of looking at it and why not? <laughs> and uh, yeah, so, the, the, and this whole battle that you see, uh, uh, what, you know, it's, it's, is anybody going to lose sleep over, okay, I'm not, oh my God, I'm not going to be able to show cricket. I'm not won the bid, so I'm not being able to, I'm not going to be able to show cricket for the next five years. Do you think any of the bidders would be losing sleep over this part alone. No, nobody's yeah. going to lose sleep over this part alone that you I don't have cricket to show. What I'm going to be losing sleep over is that in the next five years, I have to sustain and stay, uh, mm. you know, and survive in this space. I need numbers and numbers alone can be generated only through cricket. You look at, um, you look at the franchise uh, that was bought for Lucknow. Mr. Sanjeev Goenka bought it at a billion dollars, little less than a billion dollars. And the next day, the what were the questions that were asked of me? 
is like, do you think a billion dollar investment is really worth it? Is this, you know, is it, has the time come or has IPL reached the stage? That's number one, mm. which I'm saying in the next five years is going to begin to look like a steal. And mm. that aside, look at the city, the, the state, uh, where he has gone ahead and invested that money. You look at it from an Indian geopolitical perspective and the state of Uttar Pradesh the city of Lucknow has always been looked upon in the state which lacks any kind of discipline, lacks in education, lacks, lacks in job creation and all those things, you know. Uh, for all practical purposes, it's looked as a state that's been deprived of, uh, you know, any modern privileges the way it ideal should be. So, in that case, why would a man go and put that kind of money there? Uh, primarily because... If you look at, you know, we say that 80% of all, 70-75% of all cricket anywhere in the world is consumed by India and Indians, right, on television. Of that 75%, what is the percentage value that Uttar Pradesh brings to the table? If you break down that figure, mm. okay, uh, I don't, it, it, it could probably be the Mexico of football, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, so, it's it's uh, a per square kilometer fan base that exists, uh, from a cricketing standpoint. And it's a very, very minutely thought decision. And Mr. Goenka had the choice whether to go to Ahmedabad or to go to Lucknow. He said Lucknow. Lucknow, why? Because of the eyeballs that the state generates. And that is exactly the scene here. It's it's not about selling cricket rights for 100 to It's It's more about just getting those many people to sign up. Well, I mean, I talked to some people who were potential owners coming in uh, with, with the two franchises. There's the people who do own shares and, and have bought in recently. And like very few of them are sitting there going, we're going to make money from our Indian audience anyway, like from our local Indian audience. They're thinking of this as a play into creating content. They're thinking about this as a chance to sell their other products, like uh, Vijay Malia did back in the day, uh, you know, with with the whiskey and everything like that. They're seeing it as a chance to own, you know, Lucknow TV, uh, you know, you you, you Lucknow um, YouTube channel and Lucknow. Well, I was going to say TikTok, but not not currently in India, but you know, those sorts of things, and then the, a share of the rights, right? Which is the other the other big thing, and it's you know, you can go back to there are. You know, uh, you go to English football or to the American sports, places like Green Bay, like, you know, there's, there's about 12 people who live in Green Bay, right? But Green Bay is still a big percentage of the NFL's overall rights. And then the NFL has the opportunity to actually get fans. There are people in, in London and in America and in Sri Lanka who own Green Bay Packers um, shirts and, and, and merchandise. And so we know that those sorts of things. And also, I think this is the last time you people are going to be able to afford to buy into the, the IPL at, an, at a normal... I know a billion seems like a lot of money. I just don't think in five years' time, anyone's going to be thinking of a, a, a billion dollars as a lot of money. And it, if this league goes anywhere near where you and I think it could go in over the next 20 years, we're going to be thinking of a billion dollars as an absolute steal. Like Manoj Badali's Rajasthan bid back in the day and you know his ability to buy a big chunk of that it's probably going to be the most of his wealth is going to come from that one business decision. And, you know, I've talked to Manoj, he's been on this podcast before. He sees it as far more than just owning a cricket team. You know, he, he sees it as this, you know, holistic thing for his businesses and his ventures and, and also for content. So I, I don't think that people have quite, we're not quite at that level thinking in cricket because this is all new to us, right? There, you know, there are still people buying hobby teams and the CPL and the PSL and, and these other leagues. And then you've got, you know, American investors and European investors and Middle Eastern investors coming to the IPL because it is that that other level that we've never really seen before in the game. Yeah, I, in fact, I was uh, in a conversation with someone. I was actually mentioning this the other day that you look at the ownership in IPL, right? I mean, when CVC Global, which is again one of the largest private equity players in the world, came and bid for the Ahmedabad franchise, people half the people didn't really have an understanding of how this space works. But look at the work that they've already put in the West, you know, whether it was Formula One, whether mm. the rugby league that they invested in, or, you know, their recent attempt to invest in La Liga, which again, I didn't think uh, worked out, but eventually they were there. So in the West, this has been, uh, or, you know, uh, let's look at the New York Times story of what was supposed to happen in Europe with regards to the Champions League. Mm. And, you know, uh, I think it was Jim Morgan or what, Morgan Stanley come again. And so we've not, the, the IPL, is still such a baby at, at the stage at which it is that 
it's still not woken up to these so-called big players coming in and stepping in. It's still a movie star in India, Shah Rukh Khan, who's owning his franchise and it's a neat business which is giving him returns of whatever 200, 300 crore per uh, year, per season. Now when the media rights goes up, probably it could double up, you know. The, so they're not looking at it from that perspective yet. And very few have. Manoj, you took the example of Manoj. Manoj went and got the Redbird deal done. And uh, today, in hindsight, Manoj got the Redbird deal done, I think uh, it was less than five months before the new auction, uh, franchises went on sale. Yeah. Uh, the two new franchises. Look at the Redbird deal that Manoj did. It looks, it, it actually looks so much smaller now when you look at a billion dollar franchise. And, and you are right, in five years time, this very billion dollar exercise might actually not look like anything. I mean, you know, when you look at a bank from America or when you look at a, a, at a Chelsea or an Arsenal owner sitting, you know, in America coming in and you know, that's where it's going ahead. We saw what the Glazers wanted to do. And then again, I think it, it was a, it, it was a sort of a realization that, you know, the, the valuation game has really, really gone like beyond what mm. the West was seeing. So I think when they come back next, they're going to come back with a very, very different perspective to the markets here. No, no, I definitely agree. Just on the numbers, I think this was last year. Uh, yeah, it must have been. Was it 400 billion viewing minutes um, that you said? And that's a 12% growth uh, uh, per game on what we've seen before. I mean, that number sounds made up. Uh, see, okay. Uh, first of all, I don't really give a lot of importance now to the television numbers mm. because there is no way of figuring out right now how many people actually are watching this sport on television in the first place, right? And digital is something that outside of subscriber network, you really can't track how exactly the sport is being consumed. So in India, the the whole idea revolves around Bach and how Bach tracks the yeah. it's the ratings. Uh, and no, uh, and, and it's worth pointing out that no rating systems in the world is ever accurate anyway. They're, exactly. all, they're all a guess. Exactly. So I can tell you some numbers. If you break down, uh, uh, you know, the kind of viewing minutes that a Chennai Super Kings game has uh, received, and purely from a television perspective. Or a Mumbai Indians versus Chennai Super Kings clash. And this is not, not over the 22 season, but, uh, you know, during the pandemic or just before the pandemic, even the 2019 edition. So... There are individual numbers. Again, those numbers are added up to get a certain estimate. Mm. But to say that these numbers have any kind of a realistic value doesn't really make sense. First of all, as you, we would agree, like, you know, the, how do you even track digital? There is no way to track digital. And again, there are so many other ways. Like, you know, for example, uh, you know, I, 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 like if I'm using a smartphone and if I'm watching a match in Hotstar while I'm traveling, I could just minimize it and the match would still be happening and I could probably be listening to it you know, while I'm driving or whatever. So I don't know how do you uh, kind of uh, estimate that. There's no way to uh, kind of put an estimate to it. Yeah. I, I mean, it, but that's the kind of, I think at the very least, that's the kind of numbers that it's important to note that any, that these companies are reading, right? Even if it's not true, that's the sort of, that's the sort of pool that we're talking about here. I want to talk about the five year right cycle. So, I think you said that the Premier League is three years, basketball's seven or eight, baseball's nine, and the NFL's about seven or eight as well. I would have thought that I'm actually surprised that I, I, I know you were saying that you're surprised that, or not surprised, but you were mentioning that they didn't go longer uh, with their cycle. Um, and uh, yeah. I'm actually surprised they didn't go to a three or four year model only because India is probably one of the fastest moving countries in the world. Like I've been saying for about the last 15 years that it's like America, uh, 1930s America on speed, or 1920s America on speed. Um, and uh, so I would have thought that with that, and also the fact that, as you were saying before, and I'm completely with you, that TVs are just no longer going to be the same as they once were. I'm surprised they didn't even make it a smaller cycle. Do you know why they ended up with the five-year number, though? Yeah. So I see, I've always, I mean, until now, I had always agreed with five because uh, even the last time when, you know, they were, they were considered uh, five years ago when they were contemplating bringing 10 to five, I was uh, one of the biggest advocates that, you know, the, the cycle needs to be shortened. It needs to be brought down to 10 years. And this year, they did give it a thought that whether it can be brought down potentially to three years. Mm. Okay. But you, uh, and here is where I like some of the things that BCCI does. Okay. 
is because in India, at the end of the day, the way any business functions, it's also has its own downside in terms of the complications that arise from any new business, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so, for example, the television business in India, it has its own share of complications. You know, there is something called the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, which again tells you what it should be the upper limit for a commercial that you charge and blah, blah, blah. There are a lot of red tips that you don't have to cut through. So any broadcaster who's paying top dollar for a property, it's not so regimented as it, as it is like in the West with NFL or something, where from day one you are in business and there's a set model and there is a functioning policy framework, which again is, you know, changing real time as the business of the game is changing. Mm. Uh, things in India only purely from an IPL perspective hasn't evolved yet. I'm not saying that, you know, it shouldn't happen five years later. But as of now, it's still way too early to break it down. So if a new broadcaster is coming in, in a country like India, the broadcaster will still take a full year to settle down in the business. Mm -hmm. So year two and year three is where he's going to try to make the bulk of the returns from the investment that he's made. That's why a three-year cycle was thought as short. And okay. they stuck to the five-year cycle, which I think, only from an India perspective is a great decision. I mean, you know, as things evolve, you can probably think of bringing it down to three, which should be the norm going forward. Mm. Probably, I, I, in fact, I'll add here that I see a day in sport somewhere in the world, wherever it is, that rights are going to be sold annually. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, th I think that makes sense. Because the reason I think it should be shorter is because what you, especially with the IPL, Right. It's such a unique thing for all the, you know, when we talk about Amazon and uh, Disney and Sony and all these different companies, right? What you don't really want is for them to be, to, to be in a position where they don't feel they have the structure in five years. Time. If you don't have the IPL for five years, as you said before, we, and you and I have both seen this with, with many um, broadcasters in India before, how much it flattens those companies, right? If it's three years, you probably, you think, if, I, if I'm a CEO of a TV company or, or, a, or a streaming company, I'm like, three years, okay. I could probably I style this out a little bit. We could work this out. We could come up with 12 new reality TV shows and, and you, know, you know, pump up Kabaddi or hockey or whatever we have to do in the short term, right? Five years, I'm going, whew. That, that was my only thinking. And, and then the other side of it is, of course, we, we don't, like my, my, my dad really doesn't watch live TV anymore and he's in his seventies. Um, and I'm thinking if there are people in their seventies now already not watching live TV, then, um, uh, what is it going to be like in three years time or in five years time? Uh, the market is going to be so different again, and it's going to keep changing. You don't want to be in a situation which we've seen with some, you know, with, with some other, uh, cricket boards at times where they almost get caught in, they get a really nice deal but it kind of backfires on them a little bit when the market changes and they, they can't really update um, themselves. That was, that was my only thinking, just that specifically India moves so quickly and the, and the IPL is moving so quickly that you don't want to be caught out. But I, I completely take your, your, your thoughts on that. And that one year thing, I think you're right. I, I think it makes sense. And, and, and in that, there is also something for, you know, the non-rights player to actually sit and, and think about here is that, uh, if you look at the cricket content that is generated out of India, uh, you know, I'm not talking about print or, or websites like Cricket for Quick Buzz. Let's leave that aside. But from a broadcast perspective, the content, um, even for a rights holder, if you if you look at the challenge that they face, or I don't even know whether they've wrapped their head around that challenge. Look at Hotstar, for example. They have still not figured out what exactly should their non-live content be. Mm. So I'll give you an example. In 2009, when the IPL was played in South Africa, I remember a conversation that I was having with Lalit and Bloemfontein. The match uh, was ha the IPL was being played in Bloemfontein that evening, afternoon rather. And Lalit had just come early to the ground. He was walking around, and uh, he said the ground was empty. A couple of hours were left for the match to begin. He said, "Look at the stadium. It's all empty. You know, the music has not come out yet, and players are yet to reach. Spectators are yet to fill up, and the DJ has not started playing. The cheerleader is not." You know, he says in an hour from now, all of this will fill up. The music will come on, cheerleaders will start dancing, players will start coming out of the field, you know, and action begins. He says, when that happens, that's the easiest part of my job. I can go up to the box there, put my feet up and relax. Because when there is live content, I don't really have to use my brains. Mm. 
my challenge lies when what do i do when there is no life fund and if you look at broadcasters in india i gave you the example of that cricketer from madhya pradesh kuldeep sen mm. kuldeep sen from madhya pradesh madhya pradesh boy kuldeep sen uh now on that very day when this commentary was happening on cricket for uh, a young reporter had actually written a 800 word feature on kuldeep sen all they had to do was scroll take a print out of his and walk into the commentary mm. and they would have had 10 points to talk about it and i think that is where a broadcaster is lacked in terms of creating non live content and that's where the challenge lies lies for any party that does not win the rights you can still be relevant the point is how do you do that and is enough thought going into it is enough thought going into fact that you know you really don't have to be on the right side of things to actually you know kind of uh, to deliver in spot so that balance you know you have if you have to survive i'm sure you're going to start go looking for an answer no i mean i think you're right i've spent most of my career working without rights and over the last 2 years especially since my i started my youtube channel you get so many people come up uh and and they want want to get involved and, and you know and they and they want to do something and you're like we can do stuff but it involves proper teams proper proper backing and creativity and eventually they end up with the same thing which is uh an indian known player who's generally not that famous because he if he was that famous he'd be working at the IPL sitting in front of a camera and talking and i'm like that already exists what can we do that isn't that and i think that is i i i think that's a real and this is this is not an IPL thing either i think this is a real cricket problem if you look at the way that american sports and even soccer and, and football have the ability to create all this incredible content outside of rights and so far in cricket outside of rights has been very 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 bland and very very ordinary coverage and the same things over and over again but again you can take your liberties outside of rights you can actually if you are on the right side of things then you are actually shackled by you know the do's oh, and yeah. don'ts of the ecosystem that you and there is so much to do outside of it uh, which uh, it just needs an it 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 just needs a uh, you know kind of uh, spot i believe in india i'm not talking about it globally mm. from a cricketing standpoint you need to remove those blinkers and you need to see spot for what it is not for what you have bought and that's why you're going to show and not because what you've not bought is something that you do spot is still spot mm. you have 25 other ways to go and explain what it is I mean, look at your YouTube channel. I I keep tracking it, and I, and you are coming out with content, right? You're not necessarily uh, uh, you, you you. It's not like you know t- tomorrow because you don't have a Virat Kohli or a Steve Smith talking to you, so you're not going to think about yeah. it. You are doing what you're doing. So I think uh, that challenge for broadcast is the end. Let me add here that there is a going to be a time where if you you know you talked about the period where you are without rights and what do you do? Mm. You still have to go through it, right? it is going to reach a stage where you if you have to retain sustain yourself and stay relevant until the next opportunity arrives presents itself itself you still have, you have to go around figuring the uh you know your game here and it's difficult i'm not saying it's easy because here in india the problem is even the rights holder can't figure out what he wants to do when there's no game on the television so forget not having the rights at all yeah beautiful well, thank you very much for coming on the podcast Pleasure was mine. Thank you.